Good morning. The Sunday School lesson for Sunday, November the 15th, lesson number 11, Confident Love. Devotional reading comes from Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Background scripture comes from 1 John, the 3rd chapter, verses 11 through 24. Uh, 2 John, 4th through 11th verse. And 3 John, the 5th through the 8th verse. Our key verse for today comes from 1 John, the 3rd chapter, and the 24th verse. He that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and be in him. And hereby we know that he abided in us by the Spirit which he has given us, the Holy Spirit. Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 45 Church Street, Peter Monton Springs, Alabama, 36471. Telephone numbers 251-564-2171. The church where everybody is somebody and Christ is the head. Reverend Wayland Oliver is our pastor. Sister Joyce Oliver is the first lady. And our clerk is Ms. Lisa Starwood. Sunday school is held every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. And like many churches across this country, the pandemic plague has caused us to broadcast our Sunday school service on the Internet. And you can find it also on the Antioch Number One Baptist Church um, page, Facebook page, website, worship service on second, fourth, and fifth Sundays. At um, we do it now at uh, 8:30 a.m. in the morning, and uh, we thank uh, you all for being here with us on uh, the Sunday school lesson for November the 15th, um, 2020. Hebrews, the uh, 13th chapter, verses 1 through 8. The changeless Christ, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to determine, entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds as bonds with them and them who suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled from fornication and adultery. God will judge. Let your manner of life be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my brother, I would not fear what man shall do unto me. And verse 7, Remember them who have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, who has followed considering the end of their manner of life. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The changeless Christ, Jesus Christ, do not change. Confident love, knowing that Jesus Christ will not change. First John, the third chapter, uh, 11 through 24. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We have been focusing on the lesson in regards to loving one another. And the, uh, it is a powerful, powerful word that we should continue to love each other just like Jesus Christ loved us. Verse number 12. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. You knew, knew very well what that meant. And whereby slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Marvel not if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Love your brothers and sisters, Christians. Whosoever has, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has entered eternal life abiding in him. Has entered life abiding in him. Murderer. Hereby perceive... Hereby perceive we love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 17, But where so, but whoso has this world's good and seek his brother's has, 
have need, and shut up his bow of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? We very well knew what that means. Shut up his bow, you don't you don't consider them. You you won't give them of that with their needs. Uh, you may have and, and and you will not share with them. All right. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deeds and in truth. Love in deeds and in truth, not in words and in the tongue. It's just talking smack about love that you really don't love. You've got to do some action, take some action, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Verse 20, For if our hearts condemn us, God greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if your heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because he keeps his commandment, and do things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the same of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Verse 24, And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abided in us by the Spirit which he has given us. We are focusing on love for one another. This is Unit 3, Godly Love Among Believers. And the lesson aim is, after participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to list several ways Jesus calls his disciples to show love for fellow believers. We can list a couple of them. That's by action and doing, but not by talking in, 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 in words. All right. Explain how, what Jesus meant when he promised that he would that the world will hate Christians. He's talking about referring to how they hated Jesus Christ. They hated Jesus Christ. They hate you as Christians as well. Recruit an accountability partner to help him in her in her grow and to keep God's commandment love. Alright. The lesson outline is Hated by the world, lesson in context, talking about Cain, how he hated his brother, a loving from the a loving from the beginning, a gentle reminder, lifeless like murders. Oh man, the end of hate is death. Christ sacrifice. Imitate Jesus Christ. Demonstrate love. Demonstrate love. Um, faith tests. Out of the heart of action, evidence required. Evidence is required of you. If you love somebody, you got to prove it. All right. Hated by the world. Blogger Carrie Nirenwolf has written the non Christian hate Christ, Christian because they think they are judgmental and hypocritical and insincere friends. But history tells us the story of many Christians who were none of these things. We can find many examples in our church today. Christians who refuse to be judgmental, whose lives are not hypocritical and whose friendship are sincere, both with believers and non-believers. Still, some of these exemplary folks suffer persecution and even death. There must be a deeper dynamics here. Most Christians have plenty of room to be more Christ-like in our relationship with non-Christians, but nothing we do will earn the world's love. Don't ever think that you're going to earn the world's love, because the world don't care nothing about you. There was also, this was also true for John's reading, for John's readers. What is to be done in a seemingly no-win situation. Powerful words about the world and what goes on in the world. The three letters of John were likely written about the same time 
as the Gospel of John in A.D. 80 or 90. It let us reflect a personal relationship with the, with the readers, like a pastor writing to his flock. Indeed, early Christian sources indicate that the Apostle John left Jerusalem and his home region of Galilee to settle in the city of Ephesus. Paul had founded the church of Ephesus in the mid-50s on his third missionary journey, as in Acts 19, chapter verses 1 through 22. The city had become a center of Christian activity, and this was strengthened by the arrival of John, 15 to 20 years after Paul. At the time of the writing of 1 John, the apostle had served as pastor of the Ephesians for more than a decade. John wrote as the senior statesman of the church, likely the last living of the twelve original apostles. First John contained a wide range of topics that summarized the age, apostle teaching, advice for his beloved children. The Christians of Ephesus, the letter of John deal with their factions within the outside of the church of, of, of Ephesus. Factions in situations outside of the church of Ephesus, which had begun to teach many false things. Example, 1 John 2, 1 and 18, 22, 4 and 13. Included in this list were things like the denial of the true humanity of Christ and therefore his atoning death and the reality of sin in the lives of the teachers and the assurance of salvation for believers as taught by Jesus. John wrote the epistle because the background of false teachers who came to be known as agnostics, among other things, agnostic taught that it did not really matter if a person had morality or love as long as he had secret knowledge. To combat this false teaching, John emphasized that in the interconnection of right belief, right action, right love. To put it another way, it is the right involvement of head, hands, and heart. The child of God must believe the truth, obey the commandment, and love brothers and sisters in Christ. All three of them go together. John showed that such threat John showed that such threats to the faith must be dealt with firmly and without co compromise, yet with a spirit of love. Christian cannot return hate and abuse with more hate and abuse. Forget that. Forget that. Getting back at folks, returning what they do to you, you going to do to them? No, no, no. Absolutely no. Even in the most contentious relationship, love must prevail. Surely this applied to John himself, whose teaching were under attack by the heresies. His original reader may have witnessed firsthand his response to his antagonistic antagonist. If this had been anything but love, the message of John, First John would have have a hollow ring. John demonstrated that we are in the right and walk us in truth. John demonstrated that if we are in the right and walk us in truth, we can bring great confidence to our relationship with anyone. This is not uh, this is not arrogance or elitism, but inner strength that does not depend on the approval of others for personal well-being. Look at Cain's example. It's in First John, the third chapter, verses eleven through fifteen. Cain, uh, loving from the beginning, verse eleven. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning that we should love one another. The beginning for John refers to his original teaching among his readers. His message has not involved our chain, and the basic message is still that we should love one another. Love one another. Furthermore, this key except concept can be found in, in teaching of, of Jesus, John 13, chapter, and the 34th and 35th verse. The words of his master made a strong impression on the young John, 50 years earlier, he never forgot them. He does not want his readers to forget or neglect them either. All right. Not as Cain, who was that of a wicked one, and slew his brother, wherefore slew he him, because his own works.